Well, hello and welcome to my channel. You know, uh, today I'm going to be working on a custom figure, uh, this Lewis Tully. The head sculpt is really neat. I got it online at an Etsy store. I'm going to put the uh, link below. Uh, I think it's Trucker Dave's uh, Toy Box is the name of it. And there's some fabulous pieces there. I got a lot of my Scooby-Doo um, heads from, from that particular website. It's got some really neat stuff. But boy, look at that. I am so excited to get started on this. So, but before I do that, I'm gonna have to go ahead and prime it. I was thinking about some different primes uh, that I could use. Uh, I thought maybe gray, but I think I'm gonna go with white. I'm gonna go with a white primer because I want this, um, uh, I guess, salad bowl on his head, this colander, to kind of pop. I, I want it to be um, a really bright silver. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it white, and then that way the, um, uh, the little attachments and stuff when I add color to them will really stand out. So let me go outside, get this thing primed, and I'll be right back. Yeah, he primed up nicely. I'm gonna start with the silver on the head. Let me just get a brush. I'm just using a uh, medium-sized brush for this. I just wanna lay it on. A little loose. Maybe a um, an airbrush would be good for this. But you know, I figure, you know, I have an air airbrush. I've never used it. I figure, you know, a lot of you guys don't have airbrushes and stuff. And I'm trying to keep this, uh, you know, kind of easy. I've been getting away from that, though, with that 3D printer. You know, that's, um, I think that's a little maybe too advanced, but I'm having a good time with it. With actually both of them, I'm doing, um, I'm printing some heads right now <laughs> and some weapons. It's a lot of fun. You know, if you really, well, I don't know what my dog's barking at. Probably the squirrel. Hang on. We've got a ground squirrel out in the back, and every time he like pokes his head out of the hole, my dog goes nuts. I don't remember what I was talking about. Printing. You know, if you are gonna do this this hobby though, and you wanna, I don't know if it's saving money. I don't know if I've saved any money yet. I mean, maybe if I've had the printer for a while, I might save some money, but uh, right now it's, um, it's costing more than than actually just buying heads but I'm having a good time I'm learning about how to do it so I guess it's a win I got a good deal on both of my printers actually they were both refurbished I don't know if that's a hit and miss kind of thing though because um, you know one of my Migo buddies had some issues with one that he got uh, 3D printer, the um, the Creality one that I got. Uh, apparently the manufacturer sent him one that wasn't repaired. Or not the manufacturer, I should say, the seller. It ended up to be a, uh, well, it's a happy ending on the story. Let's put it that way. So no harm, no foul. But uh, I think that's the least expensive way to, to get started is to get yourself a very inexpensive printer and then learn off of it. Because, you know, if you bust it or you make a mistake, you're not out a lot of money. Well, that was my reasoning anyway. I think it's time to buy some new silver paint. I don't know, I've been happy with this Walmart stuff. I usually get um, higher end, but uh, yeah, you know, a lot of you guys don't want to invest in a lot of paints if you're just doing this every once in a while. I do it once a week, you know, but if you're just doing it occasionally, you know, the, the Walmart paints aren't bad. You may have to do a couple of coats. But the silver stuff is actually pretty good. I have no complaints.
I think it is starting to get old, so I'm gonna have to break down and get my 50 cents out, 59 cents or whatever, plus tax, and probably get a new, uh, a new tub. Okay, getting inside these like little, uh, I don't know, attachments. It's kind of tough. Gotta make sure that you just dip your brush in there and kind of like, see right there? Kind of like cover it. I am gonna use a wash. I'm gonna use a black Nullins oil. So I need to make sure that I cover everything silver that should be silver. And it looks like I've done a pretty good job. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna move on to the um, to the flesh tone, and then I'll let those two dry, and then I'll come back and I'll work on some other things like the glasses and the hair. <coughs> okay, for the flesh, I'm using Kisla flesh. Yeah, I would break down and get the uh, the Citadel flesh colors just because there's such a good variety of them, you know. And again, I'm coming back with a wash on this, so. Ooh. Let me watch out uh, where I put this stuff down by the, by his helmet. Just can't get over the sculpt, it's so cool. <clears throat> yeah, get underneath the eyes in here in the glasses. If I cover that strap, I don't think it's a problem. Yeah, if anyone got a printer and they're, um, you know, they're kind of like wondering about how to use it, just let me know what kind of videos you want, and um, I'll go ahead and you know try to put something together if I can. <clears throat> Actually, my last video was a question that somebody had about how to do Mego heads, and I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. I was learning. I mean, I'm still learning. I mean, my head's not going to be the best right now. But I'm pretty confident that I can uh, that I can learn it. I need to show you guys how to do a, a male head with the stem. That female head may be a little little tough to begin with. All right, I think I'm going to let that dry. I may go back and do a second coat on them. But so far, he's looking pretty good. Yeah, for Lewis's head, or hair, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go with the uh, Mornfang Brown. It's a base color, which means that it's um, pretty thick. It's not thinner, like some of the contrasts or the, or the uh, shades. Again, I'm not doing any fine detail, so I'm just gonna use my bigger brush. If you have a hard time like um, staying in the lines, or whatever, maybe use a smaller brush.
Yeah, there's some detail in this hair, so you have to really kind of like push the paint in. Trying not to paint into the rim. I guess I can always go back and touch it up. But the less work I have to do later, the better, I think. Same thing with the neck. I'm trying to stay off of the, the flesh tone down there. Looks like I missed a little spot. I'm gonna have to go back and touch it up anyway. I wonder what color that chin strap is. I have to go look at that. So far on a scale of one to four for complexity, I would say this guy is I mean, sorry, one to 10, I'd say he's a four. Maybe a five with the glasses. Oh gosh, look, I already went in there. Not a really difficult one to paint. Well, at least not yet. There's always something that happens though. Maybe I should reserve my scale until the end. I haven't painted all that little stuff on his helmet yet. might bump the com complexity up. I don't know, it doesn't look like it's gonna be difficult to do. It looks pretty straightforward. I think once I put a wash in there too, it's gonna look cool. Okay, I looked at the color of the strap. It's white, so I'm glad I've been staying off of it. Well, mostly. So uh, I'm gonna save that for the last thing to paint. I'm gonna go for the glasses now and I'm gonna use an Abaddon Black, which is a really dark black. It's a really deep black. Okay, so let's see. Um, this, this might be the hard part. This is where my scale changes. I think if you just stay off of the, off of the flesh by taking the brush at an angle, I think you'd be fine. Let me show you what I mean. See, I'm just pushing like against the uh, the rim of the glasses. Try to keep that line nice and straight. It looks like it's working. And then I'll come back and I'll paint it from the top. See, just like that. And you'll notice I'm using a really, really fine brush. This is one of the ones I got at, uh, I think it was uh, Michael's. Okay. All right, just bumped it up to about a six. So maybe moderate uh, paint skills. I would definitely not, I would say it's not advanced for sure. But you will need a small brush. 
Now, some people say that, you know, we could do it with a toothpick. Yeah, I guess you can do it with a toothpick. I don't use toothpicks just because I want a smooth um, finish when I paint. And just the toothpicks to me just seems to kind of like glop it on, you know? I don't know what the technical term is, but glop is pretty good. Now, I have used pins for eyes for pinpoints, but I'm not painting with it, you know, I'm just, um, I'm just dabbing it. Oh boy, that's looking good. All right, this this is this is the tough part right here. I can tell. Oops. Yeah, but that's the thing. If you if you get some on the flesh, you can always go back and you can touch it up. But try not to, because you want those nice clean lines. You know, I've painted this head before. Um, if you guys remember, I did a uh, dark helmet. And I think this is the same method that I used for that. And I had a little bit of minor touch up, I think. Take your time, nice and slow. Don't put too much paint on there. Okay, it looks like I have a little bit of touch-up, but not bad. Just a little bit. So I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to, oh, I missed a spot over here. Yeah, it's important to turn it all different ways so you can make sure that you get everything that you're supposed to. It's colored black. You can see on the inside here, missed that. Yeah, and all I have to do is just push into the uh, to the glasses with my flesh color, and I think I should be fine. Oh, another spot up here. Look. Okay, looking good. Yeah, before I do my touch-up, I, I just noticed I gotta get the eyebrows. Okay, yeah, so a uh, good solid six, my bad. Okay. Again, I'm going to do my touch-up the same way I'm going to do it with the glasses. I'm just going to push my, my uh, brush into the uh, into the flesh uh, the flesh brush into the uh, parts that don't need to be covered. But yeah, I think that's got it. You know, I'm going to try a trick with the eyes. I'm going to paint them black. And then that way I can come back and I can um, add the white and then I'll have that outline there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some major touch up. Let me let that dry and then I'll do it. 
be right back. I figure while that's drying, I'll go ahead and do the doodads on his head. Um, I've got this one right here. It's layered Evil Sun Scarlet, this red. And I'm just going to paint everything that I think should be red. And I'm going to do this in stages. So, I think this should be red. Now this is where the fun is, boy. Okay, first one, let's see what else needs to be red. See this little thing right here, this little jumper. And I'm just gonna make sure that I have this uh, red color like spread out. And I guess these don't have to be perfect. Because we're going to come back and we're going to do a... Um, this needs to be red. We're going to come back and we're going to do a uh, black wash. Okay, anything? Ooh, yeah, up here at the top. Red. Best way to do these is just kind of go around them, making sure that you hit all sides. Sure there's more red in here than that. Let's see. All right, there's really no rhyme or reason how I'm painting these. I'm just kind of like spreading out the color. Need some red over here. Yeah, I guess I can come back to it. Let's do the yellow now. There's that big cable across the front. I want that to be yellow. Uh, this right here is my, um, let's see, Flash Gets Yellow. And I really want it for this piece right here. I'm just running the brush across it. It's pretty easy, it's just tedious. I think any yellow would do though. 
Just make sure that you get rid of the clumps in between the coils. Boy, that looks cool. See another yellow. And again, just like I did with the uh, with the red, I'm just making sure that I hit all these different spots. Kind of spread it out. Looking good. I think I got some spark plugs there. Oh, let me finish my yellow. Something over here needs to be yellow. All right, now the blue. Ooh. I think one more coil needs to be yellow up there. That's a lot of blue. I guess this one. Okay. Another blue. Now I keep seeing all these places for the yellow. Yeah, one more. Okay, now the blue. Let's see what is this? Um, Aldorf Guard Blue. Definitely this thing right here.
cool. Some of these little doodads. Put that one right there. <laughs> Let me go check my dog again. Probably another squirrel. No, a much bigger animal. Neighbor's dog. I guess she's getting jealous they're taking the dog for a walk. Uh, let's see. I guess right here. I'm going to have to go back and add some more red, I think. That's looking good. Let's see where else should I have blue? Probably right here. Spark plugs, I think I'm going to do something different with that blue coil. I just can't get over all the detail in this uh, model, the sculpt. Really cool. Blue doodad right there. I think I'm going to go back with a red and do another red wire. Yeah, I think I need one more red. here on the side. Mm, now maybe yellow. Let me get this uh, painted red though. Wow, that's looking pretty cool. For the spark plugs, I think I have something else. I found this yellow. It's called uh, King's Gold. And there were some places there that had like a, uh, I guess a yellowish, dull yellow color, I guess is the best way to put it. 
So I'm just going to add a couple of things in the dull yellow. Actually, it doesn't look too dull. Let me try an uh, antique parchment. Maybe that'll work. I have one over here somewhere. It's golden glow, maybe that one. Antique parchment. Especially for the um, the little spark plug things. Yeah, this is much better. Okay, where was that? Saw a little spark plug somewhere. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna have to go back and touch up the tips with silver. That looks pretty cool. Okay, I think that's done. Let me go back with my silver and touch up the, the tips of it. Now when I put my black wash on there, it's going to bring it down a lot. Those colors look pretty vibrant, but as I said before, the, um, the black wash is really going to drag down those colors. And I'm just taking my silver again. and. Touching up the tips just to make sure that they're uh, distinguished from the rest of the spark plug. Let me just go ahead and go back and uh, check the bottom of this for touch up while I'm here. Wow, looking good. I wonder if I could paint those eyes now. You know what? <laughs> I didn't get the eyes. Um, I, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Just going back and I'm touching them up. I'm trying to keep the uh, black part on the top intact. Looks like I got a little bit onto the glass itself. Not a big deal. And then we go and paint the uh, 
the chin strap now. And again, if you get into the flesh tones, don't worry about it. Remember, we're going to go back and we're going to uh, touch those up. So not a big deal. Yeah, a good head sculpt always help you with your, helps you with your painting. It gives you those nice, definite lines that you need. And this is a good head sculpt. You can see I've gone all over the place in the into the face. But like I said, it's not a big deal. We'll get that taken care of right now. Wow. Pretty cool. Okay, now I'm gonna get my flesh to you know make sure that Yeah, I missed all that down here. Oh, I don't know if you saw, I painted underneath there. Okay, now the flesh tone. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do my touch-ups. And I'm just touching up where my brush went a little too deep into the, into the face. I'm just making those lines nice and crisp. See what I mean? Now the eyes. I'm just going from the bottom up. Just drawing a line across get that white paint. Now I'm going to do the eyebrows. Cool. And the glasses, I just noticed I um, hit those with white paint. Okay, time to let this guy dry. But look, he's almost done. Oh, need some silver underneath there. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, now I'm gonna do the eyes. I have this um, contrast Space Wolves Gray and it's really good for, for blue eyes. I'm just gonna take a, a drop, not even a drop, I'll make it rid of some of that. And I'm just gonna put it into the eye in the center and kind of like push up. I'm 
There's the first, first one. Now the second one. Ooh, that one's perfect. Let me see if I can get it. Boy, I think I got it. Now for the lips, I'm gonna use this. It's a, this is called layered Cadian flesh. Those are gonna be the lips. They're a little darker. And I just push the paint between the lips, lips right there. I don't do anything fancy. Boy, I think he's almost done. far with that eye. I'm going to do a little more flesh touch up. Wow, really cool. Checking them out to see if there's anything else I need. I think at this point I'm just going to do the washes. Wow. You can see how that Space Wolf's gray kind of pools. Makes really good blue eyes. Okay. I'm going to let them dry and I'm going to get the washes out. All right, I got my washes here. The first one I'm gonna start with is this Reichland's Flesh Shade. Now it's a flesh shade, but I use it for my hair because it um, gives it like a little reddish appearance. And then it also acts as a, um, a wash and it goes into the deeper um, areas of the sculpt to bring out the detail. You can see it right there. So that's what I'm doing for the hair. I mean, you can always use a brown wash, like uh, whatever you're using for the uh, flesh. Oops, looks like I got a little on his face. Let me see if I can get that off before it sets. There we go. All right, for the face, I'm gonna use a diluted, um, what is this, Contrast Gilliman Flesh. And by diluted, I mean I'm gonna put a lot of water into it. Try to stay away from the uh, that uh, chin strap, right? Boy, that did a great job. You know, these washes and stuff just um, can bring your painting to life. Uh, here we go. Nolan's oil, gloss for the, um, for the head uh, piece. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that it's very dilute. And I'm just gonna run it over the top. 
You can see it's already adding something to those coils there. And it's not bringing down the color too much. But again, like you do with the silver paint, just make sure that you get to all the little parts of it so that you have that consistency. And remember, this has to be like completely dry when you add it. I mean, if you don't, you're going to have a muddy mess. And I think I got it. Cool. You know that flesh is a little dark. I think I'm gonna lighten it up. <clears throat> I have another. Let's see. This is called layered flayed one flesh, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of it. I'm gonna do like a little dry brush on it. Let me make sure I have a dry brush. I'm just kind of blending. You're just getting rid of most of the paint here. It's not really a dry brush. Oops, that's too much. Yeah, you can skip this step. I'm just doing it because it looked a little dark. You can see that's lightening it up quite a bit. And you're just highlighting the places where the, uh, where the sun would hit or the light would hit. I think I want to put a little dot in his eye. Let me see if I can get that. Got some white paint here somewhere. Eh, no, I like those eyes. Oh, you know what? Black dot. Let's see if I can put a black dot in there. <clears throat> Gonna have to be teeny tiny. Let's see if I can get it. Because it seems to have a highlight already. Let's see if I can get a pupil in there. Wish me luck.
got it. Let me add that white dot now. What did I do with my white paint? I just had it here. Okay, I got my white paint. Again, I'm just gonna teeny little bit. This is where that needle would come in handy. Let's see if I can get it. Just the tip. I'm going to go find a needle. I'll be back. I just happen to have one in my little tomato here. Again, just a pin prick. Hmm. There it is. Ah, of course I went too big. Let me wait for that to dry. I don't want to ruin it. But this eye that came out pretty well. A little bit bigger. Can't seem to get it. I guess that's the best I'm going to do. I guess that's the best I'm going to do. All right, let me go ahead and get him dressed up and spray his head, but I think he's done. Look at that wash. That came out really nicely. Really happy with that. All right, let me go ahead and get him dressed. Whenever I finish painting, I always cover my model with a matte clear enamel. That makes sure I get a nice, consistent finish, and it protects it as well. Yeah, he came out really nicely. Let me go ahead and get him on his body. Um, but before I do, let's take a look at some of the, uh, the clothes that I got for his outfit. This is the uh, football jersey. I think that's gonna be a really nice uh, undergarment. If you remember, he had uh, like a workout outfit. It was like orange. So that's gonna go first. And then I don't know where I got this. Um, well, you know what I'm gonna have to do? I have to put his head on. I 
I am going to put the uh, shirt on first just because I don't want to pull the head over all that, you know, fine detailing. You know, I might break something, so. That's one stubborn screw. Oh, I might have stripped this guy. I hurt my hand. You can see it's a little swollen. There we go. I think I got it. Save that screw. Okay. Let me get that head on there. Uh-oh, looks like I chipped his glasses. You know, I don't think that that uh, Mac Clear enamel is completely dry. Better be careful with this guy. Okay, so those are on. Let me get his screws in. I guess I got too excited. I couldn't wait. You can see I rubbed off a little bit of paint right there because that um, matte clear coat, it acts like a glue. It sticks to the paint. And so, um, yeah, it'll, if you pull off that uh, the matte clear coat, you'll get the paint job coming off with it. And you'll notice I always take off, well, not always, but I take off the hands usually when I'm getting them dressed. It just makes things a lot easier. Okay, so there you don't have to pull the, the shirt over all of that detail right there. And then I have this, um, I don't know where I got this. Might be an Al Bundy shirt, but it's a, uh, a light blue just like dress shirt. I know that Classic TV Toys does have them. Might have the, um, oh yeah, it has a Velcro. This has got to be that, that Bundy shirt and I pulled the Velcro off. And remember, you don't want it to fit nicely. It's going to be like, um, I guess, kind of untucked. There we go. And I've got these, might as well put his hands on. Hmm, I'm just gonna tuck that in later. And then I got these black pants. I think they might be um, from Candyman. I don't remember, but Classic TV Toys has black pants there. And I'm gonna tuck in this shirt.
looking pretty good. And these brown shoes, I got them on Classic TV Toys. These are the free ones. If you order, like, I think it's 30 bucks or more, you get the, the free shoes. There's a way they go on. Kind of rubbery too. Pretty neat shoes. Oh, neat. Well, I guess he's standing up by himself. And you see, I got those printed pieces that I did, uh, I guess, the week before last. Yeah, they, these things just look so cool. So I think I'm going to get them on a stand, but that's basically what we've got here. I'm going to go ahead and get them with a couple of other Ghostbusters, and uh, we'll take a closer look at them. i got to get those glasses touched up, too. Wow. He just came out great, didn't he? I am so happy with that head sculpt and uh, the outfit that I chose. Um, but you can see that I have him with a couple of other characters. He looks fine with Dana. You know, the scale is okay there because it's a female body. But you know what? Um, with my Ghostbusters, look at the S-type body compared to the new Mego body. This thing is small. You know what? Um, I think that's going to be good because this outfit looks a little tiny on him. You know, the the, the jacket or whatever, the uh, the shirt. So I'm thinking, I just ordered some extra of those uh, Mego GI Joe Hasbro. I don't know the bundle they have on sale right now. It's clearance sale for like fourteen ninety nine. You get two figures. One of them is like a standard like uh, Caucasian body. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm, when I get that in, I'm just going to swap out uh, my Tully here and I'm going to put him on that body. That way he'll be in scale with the rest of the, the Ghostbusters. And I think his outfit might fit a little better. So that's my plan anyway. Really excited about him. I think he, like I said, he just looks great. Is he a four? No. No, he wasn't a four. I, I guess I was being a little optimistic there. But look at that. That wash. It really did a great job on that, um, on his colander, <laughs> his uh, helmet or whatever. But um, is he a four? Most definitely not. A uh, good solid six, maybe even a light seven. So, you know, moderate paint work on this guy, but it's not impossible. And you can you can forget some of the things that I did. I, I did that, um, that blending on his face. You don't need to do that unless you want to. Um, what you might do is something that's easier is get the face painted first and then do a dry brush on it and then go back and paint the eyes, the eyebrows, the glasses and the, and the strap. That way, you know, um, the dry brushing would be a lot easier to do. And then you can paint the hair and the, you can touch up anything you've got on the, uh, the helmet. So a dry brush might be an easier way to go with that instead of a blending because uh, blending, I mean, yeah, you can see it, but uh, you know, even without a blending or a dry wash, I think a, a dry brush, I think that he'd be um, a great looking figure. So, well, until next time, you guys stay safe and be cool. And uh, here's my custom next week. I'm going to paint her. Um, you know, women are always like the female head. It's just so hard to do. I don't know why. Mostly the eyes. But you can see the eyes have a really good divot in there to collect the paint. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm pretty confident about that. Just need to make sure I get her outfit. Should be here sometime uh, at the end of this week or early next week. So I think that'll give me plenty of time to, to get her ready. But um, yeah, really happy with the way my Ghostbusters is coming together, uh, fleshing it out. It's just, um, it was one of those sets I'm so glad I got. Well, until next time, you guys stay safe and be cool. And I'll see you guys real soon. Till then, bye.